In our previous video, we made a web service for our application, our plan application, and we were able to expose that web service through a WSDL URL. Now, just a refresher on web services and what they are. Web services are a way we can talk from one application to another. It can be Java to Java, or it could be Java to .NET, or Java to C++, whatever you want, because the interchange format that we're using is XML-based. So using an XML format, just about any program can read XML. The WSDL, Web Services Definition Language, describes the class that is being exposed and the methods that it is exposing. So on the client, what's going to happen is we're going to take this WSDL URL. I'm going to go ahead and copy it right now. And it's going to inspect this XML document. And it's going to be able to generate everything that it needs on the client side to be able to call this service. What's going to happen on the, on the client side is everything's going to look like it's local, except for maybe one or two lines. And we're going to make a call to something called a proxy. The proxy is going to take our call, which looks like a local call, but it's going to marshal it into some kind of XML message, send it across the network, receive a response back, and then we can interpret that response and do with it what we want. So in this case, I just happen to have it all on my virtual machine. It doesn't have to be. It's very common for web services to be across the network. Uh, that's actually when they're very useful, when you're, when you're aggregating data from, say, weather, stock quotes, geographic information, GPS information. When you take this information and you aggregate it together, or take the data and aggregate it together, you get information. And some of the best apps that we see are the ones that do a good job of aggregating data together. So I'm going to create this in the same Eclipse environment I've been using, but I really don't have to because remember, this client could be anywhere. Uh, so just for ease of use, though, I'm going to go ahead and create it in my Eclipse environment, a brand new project. Not a web project, just a simple Java project. So I choose next project name. We'll call it Plant. We'll call it Plant WS Client. You call it anything. They said that'll work, and uh, that looks good. And finish. Okay, go to Java Perspective. And again, this is not a web client at all. It's simply a just a little Java program. So we're going to start with. Um, with just a small program here, you see because it is not a web, uh, a web application, all it has is the source directory, just one moment, and a JRE system library. So uh, let me clean things up a little bit here so we can see it a bit better. I'm going to right click and say new, and then I'm going to say other. Now in the filter, I'm going to type web service. Now notice that we're going to try a different option that's right next to the option we just used. In the previous video, we created a web service, which is the server side component. Here we're creating a web service client, which could be something like a, you know, we could consume a web service on a traditional fat client application or maybe on a mobile phone of some type. We don't have to. It, it's entirely possible that one a web application is consuming web service data from another web application. In our case, this is just a little standalone program. So I choose web service client and I choose next. Now, this is quite easy for us. All we have to do is provide it with a WSDO URL, and then this wizard is going to uh, this wizard is going to figure everything out based on that WSDL. So I choose next. And that looks good, and I choose Finish. And what's going to happen is it's going to generate for me a series of classes in Complant Places UI. Now, why is that? That's because that's the package I used on the server side. One of the things it generates for me is this plant WS service service. And again, maybe I shouldn't have added the word service in there, but nonetheless, that, that's what we have. So I'm going to right-click on Source now, and I'm going to say New. And I'm going to say class, and we're going to call this class plant client and package. We don't, you know, we could just say com.plantplaces.client. We can give it a brand new package name if we want and finish. Okay. Now I'm going to make this a main application. Think way back to Java 1 when we talked about the class that starts the application. It has to have this 
magic me method public static void main. Okay, so we'll say public static void main string args. That means I can invoke this on the command line. And then open curly, close curly, and then I'm going to say plant ws service service uh, locator. So the locator is kind of what glues everything together. Get together. And you'll see that's this class. It's cut off a little bit, but that's this class right here. Plant ws service service locator locator equals new plant ws service service locator. And then control shift O organize imports. Make sure I spelled that uh, later part right. Uh, I did not. I had a feeling I typed that wrong. Locator. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to say locator. And I'm going to say get plant ws service. Okay. So this is getting the client side or what we're going to call the stub. This is going to get the stub that's going to allow us to call the SOAP message. Add statement to new local variable. Now I'm going to control M so we can look at this in high def. I'm getting a red line. And what does the red line say? It says that I need to handle an exception. Now I'm essentially in a user interface layer here because this is where the user is going to interact. I'm going to surround this with try catch. Now think very carefully about this. What do we want to do here? If we get an exception, let's tell the user. I'm going to say J option pane dot show message dialog. Just an easy way for us to post a message to the user. Uh, null for the component and we're going to say unable to reach service. Since this is just a test, I'm going to go ahead and put in the full message. If it were facing an end user, I would definitely not show them the error message that might be giving them too much information which is number one useless and confusing but number two might arm a hacker with information that we don't want them to have about our underlying system so okay looks like uh, just a moment as i clean that up okay there we go okay now what i'm going to do think carefully about this i want to say plant ws service and i want to call fetch plants so plant ws service that is the proxy or the stub class on the client side that it looks like a normal object that we're dealing with here but what it's actually going to do is take this plant name put it in an XML format move it across the network to the server side and then get back a response and return that response to us so that's what is called a, a stub or a proxy class so I'm going to invoke fetch plants and I need a plant name don't I okay so we're going to use another J option pane here. We're going to say J option pane show input dialog. Then for the message, we'll simply say enter part of a plant name. Okay. And that's going to return a string to us. So uh, on the method control one, assign statement to new local variable. And we're going to call this one plant name. Okay. Now, next line. Uh, plant name. So I'm going to assign that to a new local variable, control one, and assign to new local variable. And we're going to call this one, we'll just call it plant. Now one thing is it's telling me I have another unhandled exception now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make this catch block a little bit more generic. I'm going to have it catch all exceptions like so. Okay, and that takes care of that red line. Now let's show the result to the user. Okay, so I'm going to say J option pane dot show message dialog and once again null comma and then the message is going to be the full plant name is and we're going to say plant like so. Okay, now question for you. A lot of times when I'm grading projects I'll see this. I'll see something wrapped in a try catch really close like that and then afterwards I'll see the logic down here. What's wrong with that? Remember how a try catch block works. Uh, if an error happens here it's going to skip all lines until it comes to the catch and execute the catch block. But as a result of that plant WS service has not been populated 
and therefore we cannot use it down here. So use try catch blocks to your advantage. There's the line that could throw the exception. The lines after that line and before the catch, it is safe to assume that no exception was thrown. But the lines that follow the catch, we cannot assume that an exception was not thrown because these lines will execute regardless of whether or not an exception was thrown. These lines here will only execute if an exception was not thrown here. And these lines here will only execute if an exception is thrown here. So essentially, it's like an if test. It's just hard to visualize because the conditional logic starts right here on line 15. In any case, I'm going to save. I'm going to control M, confirm that my server is running, because I am going to need my server to be running. So I'm just going to hit this URL one more time and make sure I get a response, which I do. OK, now server's running, and I'm going to run the plan WS client. So I'm going to right click, and again, just a simple web, a simple non-web application. I can start it by just saying right click and then Java application. Okay, it needs to know what my main class is, and that one is plant client. So I choose plant client and then choose OK. Now it should prompt me and say enter part of a plant name, let's say red. Watch the console, because what's going to happen is it's going to send this over the wire, and you'll see the log statements from the server appear here. But I can assure you these are two entirely different processes running. So I choose OK, and you see the full plant name is Quercus Rubrum, Pleasant Ridge, Red Oak. And you see down here we had a few Hibernate log statements run from our server. So our client works. Let's try it one more time. Let's do run as, and I'm going to say Java application again. Remember, we had that thing called Potomac. So I'm going to say, let the prompt come up just a moment. P-O-T-O-M-A-C, Potomac, and OK. Fingers crossed. The full plant name is Assemina Triloba Potomac Potomac Paw Paw. So you see it took a little, there was a little hesitation there because it is going across the network once and then getting the response back again. And just for SMGs, let's do one more. Let's try just some garbage. So Java application, plant client, and I'm going to put in some garbage and we should get no response. and no plants match your search. So our quick and dirty client works just great. Of course, we could probably give it a better UI. We could probably integrate it with a phone app or something like that. But nonetheless, we see that we are able to call our web service from a client. So that wraps up this video. I look forward to seeing you in the next. Thank you.